Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to you. It is warm this morning. It's good to see you here if you've managed along. And welcome to those who have joined in with us online this morning. With Johnny missing again this week as he's having a well-earned Sunday off, we are delighted to welcome the Reverend Dr. Joe Samevi, who is going to take our service this morning. Many of you will remember Joe from his time with us previously, so I hope you take up the opportunity after the service to have a wee catch up with him. We're really pleased to welcome you here this morning, Joe, and look forward to you bringing God's word to us today. I've got some dates for your diaries this morning. The first one is uh, the Guild is on this Thursday evening, the 11th of August at 7 p.m. The speaker is M.L. Clipston. I don't know if you know her or not. Um, and she's speaking on priori prioritizing the disadvantaged. So all are welcome to come. It's here in the, the church hall at Thursday, 11th of August at 7 p.m. And as Johnny has already mentioned, um, in previous services, we are joining together with the congregation of Bucksburn Stonywood for a joint service on Sunday, the 28th of August at 10.30. And this will be held in Bucksburn Stonywood Church. So if you forget and come up the hill instead, you'll be disappointed because you'll probably be on your own some here as we will all be down the road. There's another opportunity to make the church a tidier place for everyone. And if you missed out the last time or if you enjoyed it so much and want to return, then please put the dates of the 26th and 27th of August in your diary. That's going to be a busy weekend. And more details re-timing will be given shortly, but it will probably be afternoon onwards. If you have a cupboard or belongings in any area of the church and will not be able to attend on these dates, it would probably be helpful for you to find some time to sort this out at a time convenient to yourself. And if you need access to the premises and require a key, then please let me know. So that's your diaries filled up. Let's join together to be filled anew with the Holy Spirit as Joe leads us in worship. Thank you, Joe. Good morning. Oh, you haven't changed. You are the same warm, lovely, kind, friendly people. And good to see you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's all rejoice and be glad in it. So we begin our worship this morning by singing, Oh, to see the dawn.
let's be seated. And shall we pray? Father God, we come to thank you this morning for the power of the cross. And we know that before your throne, all the angels, the elders, the living creatures bow to worship you and to praise you for what you've done for us. We thank you for Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who was slain for us, that he can redeem us from every tongue and tribe and nation and people and make us kings and princesses and queens for our God. This is who we are because of the cross. And so, Lord, we just want to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the dominion, all the praise for your kindness and love for us all the time. But even as we come to praise you this morning, your word reminds us in James 4, 17, that anyone then who knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it, is guilty of sin. This is where we do fail from time to time. There are things that we ought to do but we fail to do them. And so we come to you in silence, bringing the areas of our failure to you this morning. Lord, thank you that you are faithful and just forgive us our sins and to wash us from all unrighteousness. We do also thank you for these gifts and collection that your children have brought you this morning. Would you bless your people in good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over even as they have brought this offering to you this morning. Lord, we commit every part of our worship into your care today, and we join together to say the prayer you've taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the, the power and the glory. Amen. The reading of the word. Good morning. Good morning. Two readings today, and the first one is from Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And now in John chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. 
Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Amen. And may God bless these readings from his holy word. Thank you. I want us to think about three questions this morning as they, they are brought on the slide, as we can see now. Can Christians be anxious? I guess someone will have the answer already. Why can Christians be anxious? And thirdly, can God help us when we are anxious? Very simple. Can we be anxious? Why are we anxious sometimes? And can God help us? Amen. So that's the question I want us to be thinking about even as we prepare for the sermon. So we will sing again before we come to the sermon. God who is immortal. God who is invisible. But God, that God is the only wise person in the whole universe. Let's pray. Father, it's good to be here again this morning to listen to you. Your words give us hope. And so we come to you today to give us hope, to give us peace, to give us understanding, and to throw light onto our paths this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Jesus speaks about anxiety. The issue of uh, anxiety is, is a, an issue today in our world, and as, as it has always been in Jesus' world and Paul's world. Because the Bible's says a lot about do not be anxious. There's so much Bible has to say about our anxiety. 
children, adults, who have you. People are anxious about so many things. And even now today where after Brexit things are not working well, uh, there is war in Ukraine, prices have gone up. If you are on mortgage in a younger family, things are getting worse every, every time the interest rates go up. And so people have different reasons to be anxious about their future. But worst, worst of all, the people who are in the war zones in Ukraine, they are unsure where the next bomb is going to land. Children, adults are anxious in that part of the world. And over the weekend, or over the week, we know China and Taiwan, there is so much anxiety probably in Taiwan and beyond. So our world is full of anxiety, as in the days of Jesus. Yet, in the Bible, in the Word of God, we are told this, John 10:10 10, 10, says that the thief does not come. That thief is the devil, Satan, does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, or I have come, modern English, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That is the promise of Jesus to us. Despite all the things happening around us, I have come that you might have life and have it more satisfactorily, more fully. That is the promise of God to us. And yet, we are not free from challenges. But even in the challenges, in the midst of our challenges, Jesus walks beside us every step of the way. So, as a Christian, in the midst of everything, we can have joy and peace when we learn how to sit at the feet of Jesus, tap into the power of the cross, and walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we have read in this story two stories, two different stories about Martha. And people tend to remember only one part of Martha. But Martha has two parts. So, for example, when we say that you are doing Martha, Martha, it means you are being a good chef. You are a good cook. It's an expression. You are, he's doing Martha, Martha. In the kitchen, everywhere. I guess there are very good Martha, Martha's here. In a positive sense, they are good cooks. But what we read in this first story, in verse 40, that Martha was upset over all the work she had to do. So she came to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her, tell her to come and help me. Order her to come and help me. <laughs> Note that first, Martha created a lot of work for herself. She chose to create loads of work for herself. No one asked her. So the beginning of her anxiety begins when we create loads of work for ourselves. Why do we have to create loads of things for ourselves? Why do we have to create too much work for ourselves, ourselves? No doubt Martha was upset over all the work she had to do. And, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus says the same thing. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled over so many things 
so many things. Loads of work, so many things. Is this not a message for all of us? How often do we allow so many things to bother us and to overwhelm us so that in the secret, so there is no secret of contentment. So the first thing, creating loads of work for yourself. Too many, this one, that one, that one, the other one for yourself begins the issue, the problem of anxiety in the days of Jesus, and I think in our days as well. Second, she was distracted and drawn around at the same time. So Martha was running around in circles. If you have so much to do, you are running around in circles in business. Do we live our lives distracted, creating too much and running around in circles? Thirdly, too much work, running around in circles. Thirdly, she was upset. This is an inner anxiety. Sometimes people bottle up things in the inside and they do not yet express it externally. They can talk nicely, they can be very polite, they can do stuff, they can even smile, but inside they are really hurting. And Jesus said, you are, you are worried over so many things. So, doing so many things, distracted, and having inner conflict. Fourth, in this story, she was troubled. She was troubled. This is an outside agitation. What was inside Martha was now coming out. So much so that she, she had to confront Jesus. In Luke 4, 45, we are told a good man brings good things out of good store from his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of, this, out of his store of the heart. So if you have too, too, too many good things inside you, too many good things will come out. If you have too, too much evil inside you, evil will come out of you. So what is bottled inside Martha is now an external agitation and worry that everyone can see. Next, Martha accuses Jesus. <laughs> it's a hard thing to accuse God, isn't it? Martha accuses Jesus. She begins to speak what is inside her, what is external agitation. She now opens her mouth to accuse Jesus. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? She was not even addressing her sister. She had the audacity to confront Jesus himself that Jesus was not a caring person, not a sister. The Bible says that for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Luke 6, 45b. Jesus didn't tell Martha he was coming to eat in the first place. Jesus didn't ask her to cook for him. Why was she involving Jesus in this particular matter? This is what an anxious person does. Bottling things inside worry, agitating outwardly, expressing frustration in words and accusation, and you are always complaining always complaining about everything. 
So Martha now listen to If you, if you put all my slides on, the, that, okay, so I, I've, I've spoken about Martha's, Martha's anxiety. Martha is anxious. So I'm now speaking about Martha listens to Jesus. Even before I, I come to that one. Above all, we miss the point. The point about being close to Jesus, that's the point that Martha was missing. The point about who Jesus is and was for her. So Jesus rebukes her gently. Jesus did not rebuke her for being a good cook because it was expected in the culture. Above all, they were not in the days that they can easily order takeaway or pizza. But Martha's problem was that she focused too much on being a perfect cook attempting to have the first course, the second course, the third course, the fourth course, and the fifth, and the fifth course. She, she chose to do that. She chose to slaughter a goat or a sheep. She, she chose to do all of that. Nobody asked her. But she missed the point. What if she had recalled Jesus' miracle of feeding the 5,000 by simply bringing one loaf of bread and one fish. Jesus would have multiplied those and everyone would have been happy. Did you think they would have gone hungry? No. Not only would Martha have had more time with the Lord but she may have just witnessed another miracle in her house. She's focusing on man-made activities and lost the miracle from Jesus. In fact, one day Jesus reminded the disciples about this in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 5. When they crossed the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. And Jesus said, be careful, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed among themselves and said, is it because we, we, did, we, we didn't bring bread here? Jesus asked them, you of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still understand? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for 5,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? And how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking about bread? Be on your guard against the Pharisees. Then they understood that. So Jesus remind them that even though I multiplied bread and fish many years ago, I can still do it today. When we do not give God a priority and we are focused on the thing that we want to do for God, we will miss the miracles. In church, we do so much stuff for the Lord. We, do, we are busy for the Lord. We wake up early to do stuff around the church. But sometimes those stuff are at the expense of spending time with God. When we spend more time with God than doing stuff, God can multiply time for us to achieve a lot more in terms of growth. So I wonder how often we are bound to things of the earth that we miss the beauty of the Lord, even the miracles we are talking about. But we are too busy to even notice. In Matthew 26, sorry, in Matthew 6, 25 onwards, Jesus says, this is what I tell you. Do not be worried 
about your food and drink you need to stay alive? What about the clothes for your body? After all, isn't life worth more than food? And isn't the body worth more than clothes? And why worry about clothes? Look at how the wildflowers grow. They do not work or make clothes for themselves. So do not start worrying. Where will, where will my food come from? Or my drink or my clothes? So do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries for itself. There is no need to worry for tomorrow. And quite very often, the anxiety, the things we say, happen because when we create so much work around ourselves, we are distracted, we have inner conflict, we have external conflict, we begin to accuse the Lord, we begin to complain about everybody else. Who has asked you in this church to create more work for them? For them, for them? You don't know how somebody is feeling in their body on, on their particular day. You don't know the plan somebody has for their grandchildren to come. And you have created so much work. Not one work at a time, but so many work. You are stressed, everyone is stressed. But if you can focus on a simple, sim something simple at a time and on the Lord, we would have, we have, we have seen God's hand a miracle in our life. So, as I was saying, so we've got this negative image of Martha. That is someone who has not chosen the right side of life to be at the feet of Jesus. The one who complains. The one who is Martha, Martha. But there's another story about Martha, which I want us to look at briefly, which we have read in John's Gospel. And I'll say, in that Gospel of John, Martha became a transformed woman. One of the troubles in life is that we focus too much on the past. We do not see the bright future. Someone can write off you off because of your past, but your future is brighter. Some can, somebody can say negative things about you because of your past. But there are many positive things for you in the future. You can write yourself off and say, I am not good for, I am good for nothing. But I tell you, there, are, there is a brighter future for you. The past can go, but the bright future can come. That, that's the story that John tells about Martha. And so, we, as we read in that chapter, six days before the Passover, Jesus comes to their home after Lazarus came from life. And Martha was his same Martha. She was preparing the dinner. She was helping to serve. She wasn't the center of attention. Lazarus took the center of attention and other people around. He, Lazarus, was sitting around the table with Jesus. Even her sister Mary was at the feet of Jesus with a whole expensive perfume to pour on the feet of Jesus and to wipe his feet with, 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 the, with her hair. And yet, on this occasion, we heard nothing about Martha's anger or Martha's complaint. Martha was clearly pleasant, present at this time, but there was no spirit of complaining, no self-pity, no running around in circles, no, she was not accusing Jesus. She was not distracted. She was happy doing whatever she could do very well, serving the Lord a wonderful supper while others did what they could do. 
So Martha was transformed woman. Surely, probably she has learned the lesson, the secret of doing one thing at a time and doing what you are good at doing and how we today need to learn this secret and probably many times over and over again. Are you going to be the past? Are you going to represent the past of Martha? Or are you going to be the future of Martha? There are things, many things happening around us. Do not focus as we hear on so many things. Do not be distracted. Do not bottle up anxiety in the inside of you. Do not show outward agitation. In fact, if you bottle things, they'll come out anyway. Do not express the expression of frustration and being critical of others will be a symptom that something's happening inside you wrong. You are not spending time at the feet of Jesus Christ. Are we going to focus on Jesus and his word and be at his feet? He is the miracle worker. He is the person we need today to survive. Shall we pray? Father, we are human beings. And many times we are like Martha's past. Thinking about our children, our friends, our dogs, our cats, our house, the energy bill, and many things. And sometimes we forget to trust you for a miracle in our lives. And so, Lord, I just pray for ourselves this morning that whatever is happening around us, may we be bold to take it to Jesus. May we be bold to lay them at the feet of Jesus. Where there is anxiety, Lord, I pray this morning that the power, by the power of the cross, the anxieties will be broken. Lord, where there is depression, in anyone or anyone's relatives, Lord, I pray that the power of that depression will be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, set us free that we can always have joy, joy, joy in our heart because you live in our heart. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we shall respond to these words by singing, I need thee every hour. If we can live this life, I, I, beg, I bet you we need Jesus all the time.
be seated as Kati leads us in prayer. Let's just pray. Father, we give you thanks for this day, for this place, and this family in Christ. Help our church to live in a manner worthy of the calling you have given us. Help us as we walk alongside our Christian family to have humble and gentle hearts. Grant us the patience for one another, care and attention, noticing the good and the painful things in life, praying for and supporting one another in love. Grant the body of Christ unity. May we walk humbly with you, allowing you to show us our wrongs and celebrating our blessings. We pray for those who are hurting today. Lord, some have constant pain and worries for those we love. I pray you will be with them and heal them. Please give peace to those who are in the midst of serious health issues. Father, I pray they turn to you and know that you are right there beside them in that time of crisis. Help us as a church family to know the troubles in each other's lives and pray support. It's been a difficult couple of years. There are those who are exhausted because they're being stretched so far. I pray that you will lay on all of our hearts the knowledge of what you, Lord, would have us do, where we might be asked to help. Give us the conviction to help. Leaders, teachers, greeters, visitors, tea makers, welcomers, prayer warriors, friends, noticers and encouragers. So many want to be a help, but don't feel they can or don't know what to do. I pray that you will bring about a passion in the hearts of those in the family to see what they could be doing to grow and nurture the church and our community. I pray for strength for the ones that are giving so much to keep New Hills running. Be with them and bless them. Father, as we approach union with Bucksburn Stonywood, help us to be open to change welcoming our brothers and sisters into their new home. Let us together embark on a new chapter to lead us as a fellowship together on a new road to better follow the plans you have for us in the community, in the city, and in the wider world. Thank you, Lord, for giving the blessing of this place and this church family. As we have listened to your word, help us to open our hearts and our lives to the message. Help us not to be distracted, but to focus on the one thing that can never be taken from us. And to look to you in the spirit to be your light, to improve the world where we are. Amen. Thank you, Kati. And we will sing again, Great is thy faithfulness to us. God is always faithful to us.
Let's be seated as I talk to the boy, the boy and the girls, or the boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. What have you been doing today? Light. Okay. What have you been doing today, girls? So, what have you learned today? Oh, yes, we should let our light shine, isn't it? Is there anyone who's learned something different today? Okay, today we've been learning about someone called Martha in the Bible. Have you heard about Martha before? Heard about Martha? Who is Martha? Yes, called Mary, yes. You are still very good. Yes. Yes. He actually died. Okay, he actually died. Yes. Very good. Now tell me, boys and girls. Who likes doing several things at the same time? They are trying to do homework, and mommy and daddy are not wa watching, they are watching television, and they are playing their game at the same time. Is there anyone who does? You do that. So how are you able to cope doing several things at the same time? When mommy is around, do you do that? No. So. So we are learning that even we as children do juggle many balls at the same time. We are doing the homework, we are watching the television. As soon as mommy comes, our, our finger, fingers are on the remote control to switch off the television. We do several things. So we learned about Martha. One of the things we learned about her today is that there was, someone, was coming, someone was coming to their house. That person, when you have no food, that person can multiply bread and thousands of people can eat and plenty will be left over. When you have no fish, that person can multiply the fish and everyone will have enough. That person can even, if there is even no bridge over water, he can walk over water. When someone dies like Lazarus, that person can make a miracle. Who is this person? Jesus was coming to the house, that's correct. And Martha was trying to prepare food for Jesus, but she was trying to do so much. Just as we watch TV, do homework, and, other thing, and play games at the same time, she was doing so much that she was worried and upset and talking to Jesus in the wrong way. And Jesus tells her that her sister Martha has chosen the right thing to do, to listen to Jesus. So we've been learning today about anxiety. Don't do so many things at the same, do only one thing at a time. And learn to put your minds and trust on Jesus alone as Mary has done. But in, that, in the second story, which you said, 
Jesus came the second time. This time, Martha was not worried at all because she had learned the lesson. She wasn't worried. She wasn't going. She was doing only one thing, serving the meal. So let's learn as children, boys and girls, to do one thing at a time. Do not watch television, play game, do home at the same time. But in all, let us think about Jesus in all that we do like Mary. Shall we pray? Father, it is not adults who are good at doing so many things at the same time. We children also do many things at the time. And so we miss Jesus sometimes. And we miss doing our homeworks very well sometimes. But above all, teach us to be like Mary, who will spend time at your feet as children. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have a song to sing and jump. I don't know who is going to, we have a, if we are like Mary, we are all going to have joy, joy, joy down in our heart. So let's see how fast Irene is going to play this very fast for us to jump. And both old and young are going to jump and dance. Let's, let's turn it. Joy, 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 joy. <laughs> okay, no. good. Let's pray. Father, the ending today is that whether old and young, we shall be like Mary. Or the last part of Martha and have joy, joy, joy in our heart every day of our lives. And as we do May the blessing of God, the Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and abide with us all the days of our life. Amen. Let's share the grace together as we look at somebody. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Thank you very much for coming. And I just love your smiles. And it's a new hill smile. And I always rejoice coming home. I've been working with uh, Torres and Fictis and Kinkoff South St. Nicholas Church. But good to be here this time. I'll be coming twice in September again to see your wonderful smiles and your warmth and your love. God bless you today. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>